As you can see, Tala has once again run out of labels in the label maker. Where do they all go? How many things are labeled in his house? Leave your guesses in the comments below. But now on with the video. Can bridge install into AZ0 leaf? In this version of Nissan Leaf, we install the gun bridge into the fuse box that is located behind a panel where the door meets the dash. This is a Z0 Leaf that has no electronic parking brake. This version of Leaf is produced from second half of 2013 up till 2017. It has leg actuated parking brake. Here you can see the screw that we can use for negative lead on the GAN bridge connector. This is connected to the car body and as you can see previous owners has also used this. But before working on any wiring we need to disconnect the 12 volt under the hood. To get to the CAN wires, we need to remove one interior trim panel next to the door. Here we can see the connectors. CAN wires that we need to jump between are located in the left peak connector, left row two wires from the bottom. For better access, release the cable tie behind and then you can pull out all three connectors. Now let's work on the constant 12 volt power supply. Remove the nut below here if your car mechanics haven't tossed it. Now pull apart the front panel a bit so we can access the port behind it. Now we can see the ODB port from behind. Use flat screwdriver and push in the latches to release the connector. Now you can work on the 12 volt wire without being upside down. Next let's put the connector in place and start by snaking down the can wires uh, next to the fuses. And make sure that they come down left from the hood latch cable that's here. Let's measure the 12 volt wire length. Uh, guide it through the ODB2 port and pull the slack out of it. Then leave a little bit out from both sides so you can work on it and cut from there. Now pull the 12 volt lead up so you can connect it to the ODB to yellow constant 12 volt lead, that one. Here while watching me doing the soldering thing, I tell you what the CanBridge does. CanBridge acts as a man in the middle, like 
playing a phone with your friends in a stupid wedding party game. Somebody whispers something to you and you whisper it forward. This whispering goes both ways through Canbridge uh, with less errors than in the wedding party game. Uh, why do we need a middleman? Um, because Nissan wants to make more money because of reasons of living in the market-driven world. So the parts are paired to make it more difficult to change or repair things without Nissan getting a cut. Cambridge helps us with this issue, speaking the language that car expects to believe it's Nissan's installed battery. This also opens up other customization options that I'll briefly go over later in the video. As you saw, I was using semi-solid soldering flux. I recommend this because you can easily tip wires into it and you can smear it onto surfaces and wires so the solder will run easily smoothly and where it's um, expected to be. Now the 12 volt connection is made and I am adding insulating tape around it to keep it safe and to keep it in the right place, not moving around. Now we are done with the ODP2 board and you can put it right back to uh, where it should be. Now let's measure the negative lead uh, and cut it to length to the screw and then clean it and connect it. After that, I'm using the multimeter to test that there is a solid connection between negative lead and the car metal body. Time to work on the CAN wires. First, let's carefully, very carefully, uh, cut open the covering plastic around the wires. Still very carefully, yep, very carefully. You don't want to cut into any of those below there. Now here are the can wires that we need to cut into. Let's check the labels. The one with the battery label needs to go down direction where the battery is. The other one with vehicle label needs to go upwards uh, towards the dashboard. When cutting the can wires, please make sure to leave enough wire length for your preferred connection method. May it be soldering or uh, crimping, but please, no just twisting the wires together. Okay? Okay. I am doing the battery can wire first. This is the down direction into the plug. Down is where our battery is. So this goes that way.
Now the vehicle direction can wires and they are going in the up direction and up is where the brains are. Now I return the protective sleeving around the wires to its place as well as possible and cover the opening with tape to keep everything in place and not moving around. Time to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, <clears throat> more successfully than all the King's men. So here we are connecting three blocks back to where they came from that go in rather easily. And after that pull out the slack from can wires so that they sit nice and close to the other wires. Now I connected 12 volts under the hood and I'm testing are the 12 volts present in the connector for the can bridge. And as you can see it shows 11.9 so we are good. Make sure that the 12 volts wire doesn't get snagged between anything and push back the console in, it, in its place. Now we can connect up our CAN bridge and then uh, I'm pulling up the wires to make sure that there are no slack in it and uh, uh, tying them together to put them next to the fuse box inside this opening, uh, leaving me enough wire to pull it out without disconnecting the GAN bridge if I need to access the fuses. You can do tighter wiring if you feel like it. Now we can put back the fuse box cover and after that uh, Make sure that those wires are not loose and flipping around in here. Use cable tie to pull them close to the other cables and make sure that they are not flopping around when you are driving. Return the trim panel to its um, rightful place and after that you are ready to rock and roll in a responsible way. After that first boot up of the car and there we go. My com is not flipping around anymore and I have many additional features in the car. Here's a quick summary of what's currently available uh, with the CAN bridge when making this video. Battery saver. This allows you to protect your investment. You can charge battery to lower percentage for its better longevity. Capacity boost. This opens up the hidden extra buffer that you should only use very carefully. Rapid gauge dodger. This allows you to limit fast charging speed if you are, let's say, doing a long trip and battery gets too heated up. Or maybe it's summer, very hot summer. Or you are a taxi driver or some other situation where battery heat damage can start to build up. Glide in drive. 
allows you to turn off regenerative braking so that the cruise control will not waste energy slowing down excessively up to let's say 30% more energy for longer road trips. Current control allows you to pull down the slow charging speed in steps down to 1 kilowatt speed. Useful when you are when you don't have fancy wall or granny charger or must use very ex very long extension wires. This can also be useful in situations where your energy source can't provide high amperage or charging speed and using kitchen might trip your breakers. I'm also hoping that we get uh, control over battery heaters in the future. They are looking into it. And that's it. Big thanks to Dala for providing me with the bridge and I am putting links to documentation and his, his site below the video. By the way, you don't need to change the battery to use the bridge. This can be added to pretty much any Nissan Leaf. Thank you for watching. Give me a subscribe if you want to help me a bit. And I hope this was helpful or at least interesting for some of you.